Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube. This is a series of uh, my prep for the New York Pro. And I also have Matt Jansen featuring in, in, this, in these video series to explain the changes that he's making to my diet and cardio, etc. while we're on this prep. Currently I'm 16 weeks out. If you watched last, last episode, the only really big change for the week was, was a cheat meal. And that had brought my weight up after to uh, 245. And so it was about a three pound increase. I was around 242. Um, it's slowly come back down throughout the week. So the current diet does have me dropping some body fat. And this morning, <clears throat> I weighed 243. And I, I, but I do see that my, my legs look a little tighter, my abdominals, my midsection looks a little tighter. But there was, Matt Jansen did decide he went to and made some more diet changes and cardio changes to further the fat, the fat loss process. So I, um, I post, I want to go through my diet today and let you actually see what it looks like. So in the description below, I posted the full diet. I also put it on my IG story on, on my highlights. So you can go to my bio and look at that. I'll, I'll keep updating it so you can continually see the diet changes that are, are getting made. So I just got up this morning. I'm about to go do cardio. I haven't eaten anything yet. And I'll, I'll get back to, to the apartment. I'll do, have, start having meal one and go from there and let y'all follow along. And I'll go ahead and turn it over to Matt Jansen. He can explain some of the changes that he made to the, the current diet. What's up guys? Uh, John is 16 weeks out, so I wanna go over the changes that I made this week and give you some insight into why I made those changes. Um, just kind of actually, I'm, I'm just literally going through his email that I sent him. Um, the first thing that I changed was this cardio. And just to kind of touch on cardio, I know that John is somebody that needs to do cardio. So I'm not like anti-cardio. So my thought process is if we know that he needs to do it, um, and we also know that he has a goal weight that he has to make, let's just get the process rolling. So I basically threw him on cardio seven days a week, 30 minutes a day now, um, and when his body's in a more fragile state towards the end of prep, that's when I'll pull back. Um, so ideally, you know, he starts coming down and, and everything's coming down in a good way. That way at the end, uh, we can save his legs and, and instead of just throwing a bunch of cardio in at the end to make weight, if we're slow and methodical coming down all the way through, I just feel like that's a more sensible approach um, to get him down to where he needs to be and also save as much tissue as possible. Plus John's legs are very good and, and he trains legs hard. I think training legs hard during prep um, and not changing your style of training is one of the best ways to maintain your leg size during prep, um, especially for those that have to do a lot of cardio. So just don't change your style of training. Um, keep heavy movements in throughout and your legs will stay because you're forcing them to do work um, that they have to do. You know, So that's one thing for sure to keep intact. Um, everything else basically, uh, just to kind of go over the nutrition side of things, I'm not somebody that makes a drastic change. Like I want the, the transition into prep to be easy. Um, I don't think that we should go from one extreme to the next of, of eating a sufficient amount of food to basically eating nothing. So basically I pulled all of his meals down to 50 grams of carbs a piece leading up into training. And then after training, I reduced the carbs a little bit more. Um, and some of you guys might wonder why I pulled more carbs after training. Um, and my goal for John, uh, and this is going to be the goal throughout prep, is I want him to go on to training as strong as he possibly can be, you know, within wherever he's at at that point in time. So I actually care about putting food in prior to training. And if he needs to struggle, I'd rather him struggle after training, but at least get some energy in prior to. So that's the reason why I put more food in prior to training, after training, um, glycogen recompensation. I'm not totally, you know, that I'm not really worried about that right now. Um, we're not in a, at a place where he's going to risk muscle loss. So that is the reason why his, his last two meals, I pulled food more there. Um, but again, even his, his meal five, his post-training meals at 50 grams of carbs, and then his last meal is more, more around 25. Uh, but that's basically the only changes I made at this point. Pulled fats a little bit as well. But again, it's not a drastic change. I'm not going from one extreme to the next. I, usually, I pulled about either 25 to 45 percent of his fat per meal but but again he's, he basically has seven grams of fat at each meal now versus prior to he was having 12 to 14 grams of fat so that's basically it for this week i'm excited to get the ball rolling i know that initial phase was 
might have not been the most fun update, but that's you know where he's at at this point. So no cheat meal this week. We'll just get rolling and, and see how his body through this these simple changes starts to respond, and then we'll go from there. All right, so Matt gave you the breakdown of what the current changes were. I just pulled up to the gym, about to do my cardio. And for my cardio, I'm just doing steady state. Uh, in the off season, I, I will do a little bit of steady, steady state, typically like three to four days a week. So I am increased to the seven days a week for 30 minutes. And I, I do usually start with steady state and just build that in and it increases. And you, you know, a whole video could be on just hit versus steady state. And I, a lot of the research does support doing hit. You do have to evaluate what you're starting at, what's your baseline cardio status. So I haven't been doing any hit in the off season. Being head, like I was up to two, 260 pounds at the peak off season, doing hit is extremely taxing at that body weight. And you have to realize that. And uh, you can extrapolate what you, can, what you from research and try to apply the best that you can. You don't see any studies with 260 pound bodybuilders doing hit, and also on prep and a calorie deficit uh, with as much training volume as someone like me would have. So you have to consider that before you try to apply research. So I'll, I'll just do steady state for now. I probably never will actually implement hit just because it is so taxing on the on the nervous system and that on top of training legs twice a week your, your legs just get fried because I've done it I've tried it and it, it's just too much for me personally my clients though I can have uh, it seems to work well with my my girls that I, I, I train or uh, even lighter bodybuilders that aren't in, in a higher uh, level of development but anyway before I train and this isn't like a plug for anything, this is just truly what I do. Um, during training and on the way to the gym, I will just drink like half a scoop of Animal Fury just for the, the caffeine in it. Um, and one thing I'm trying this season, uh, I've done aminos in the past, but I'm gonna try the uh, the Animal Nitros. Evan Cinepani, he like just swore by it and I was having discussion with him about it. And they're just essential amino acids, which I'll, I'll use. I might do the animal juice aminos just for the something to drink, because those are your EAAs as well. Uh, they might have a, you know, research-wise, it looks like they maybe have a like a minimal impact, if if any. But again, we're looking at a, a population that you, you really don't have a a body of research to a, apply to. So, a lot of this is just trial and error and what you what you notice and there's a lot of variables here so it's going to be hard to really uh you know see if that's a variable that's make, making a difference um but he did said he, he feel like he got better muscle retention and, and kept fullness with it. that's what that's what evan had, had stated so i'm going to give it a try and, and do it now for a lot of people i don't think amino acids during training or before cardio is, is really necessary. You're really not at the training level to, to need that. I just got back, I finished cardio. So meal one is actually supposed to be turkey and rice and, and olive, olive oil. Um, I don't have my turkey prep for the day, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna need to just kind of match my macros with oatmeal and for 50 grams of carbs, I'm gonna do 75 grams oats <clears throat> I don't normally do that I'll usually stay right on with what I have on the plan but for today I, I'll need to um, so for the sub out the olive oil I just use 16 grams of peanut butter and then I'll use uh, 50 grams of protein from whey to for the turkey and that'll be the start of the day for meal one meal two now uh, this meal is seven ounces of turkey, 180 grams of white rice, and 50 grams of asparagus, and then also seven grams of olive oil just drizzled over it. I've been doing ground turkey just because I got really burnt out of chicken, so I'm, I'm doing a 99-1 ground turkey. It, uh, since it's ground, it makes it really easy to chew and also just to digest. For the asparagus, I don't do any 
you usually don't do many fresh vegetables just because of prep time. So these are all just frozen asparagus. I can just dump it in my Tupperware, heat it in the microwave, and it's ready to go. Head to the gym now. Uh, so far, I have two, meal, two meals down. I'm gonna be just drinking my pre-workout shake on the way. This is 40 grams of branch cyclic dextrin, six grams of citrulline malate, put five grams of Hydromax glycerol in it. It also, I took the animal nitro pack and I opened the pills up and dump it in. So it has um, about, uh, about five grams of uh, essential amino acids. Oh, it's a little more than that, maybe like 10 grams of essential amino acids. Um, and then half a scoop of Animal Fury. So I'll get this down, I'll, uh, I'll get to the gym, and then I'll, I'll add in another 40 grams of branch cyclic dextrin and uh, another 10 grams of essential amino acids and drink that during. All right, just finished training. So post-workout right now, we're just down to doing uh, 65 grams of whey isolate. Uh, no carbohydrates in, in this shake, so just, just protein go back home and get another my post-workout meal in. Back from the gym now, I'm gonna have meal three. I made this before I left. It's uh, 65 grams of cream of rice, 16 grams of almond butter, and 50 grams of whey isolate. I just prefer eating it cold. So, um, have this and just keep going on with my meals. So for meal four, there's 180 grams of white rice and also seven ounces of beef. I'm doing 93.7 ground beef. I started off off season with 96.4, and then as we added calories in, I went to 93.7. So I still have uh, some fats in this meal from the, that uh, 93.7 ground beef. Um, also having a pickle. Maybe have a pickle once a day, or maybe every other day. I just like them, um, and they're only five calories for each one. So uh, I'll, I'll have them every now and then. So I have meal five here. It's, it's the same thing as my last meal. It's seven ounces of beef, 180 grams of rice, and I, I put in like 50 grams of asparagus, the same uh, 93.7 beef. And I did put a little bit of pasta sauce. It's maybe a tablespoon on it and some sriracha. So uh, today actually feels like prep. I, it's the first day of prep that I did cardio and trained legs. Usually I don't do my cardio on my leg days, so it actually feels pretty worn out. I feel like I am on prep finally. All right, so this is finally my last meal, meal six. It's two whole eggs, five ounces of turkey. It's 99.1 ground turkey. And then I have just one English muffin. And that's, that's the whole diet for the day. Again, like I said previously, in the description below, I'll list out my whole diet. You can also follow the diet along as it changes on my IG.